are listening to an All Games Radio Network broadcast of allgames.com. Welcome to the show. Hi, this is Normie from Knuckleballer Radio and Zombie Cast, and you're listening to one of my favorite shows on the Geeky Antics Network. Don't forget to check out the rest of the gang over at geekyantics.net. Warning, there might be rants and food ahead and possibly inappropriate behavior. Don't tell anybody, though. You're about to listen to the Timey Wimey Tea Time Podcast, a geekyantics.net and allgames.com production. Find out what everyone's talking about. The Doctor, of course. Doctor Who? Exactly, that Doctor. <laughs> Join us live at www.twitch.tv forward slash geekyantics. That's G-E-E-K-Y-A-N-T-I-C-S. Hang out with us, ask questions, laugh and have at it. We can't wait to hear what's on your minds and hearts. Tiny, whiny, tea time. Greetings and welcome to Time and Wimey Tea Time, where friends gather to talk all things Doctor Who, sci fi, fantasy, zombies, creativity, and geek them as a whole. I'm Yoma Lopez, known throughout the interwebs and sometimes the Whoverse as Yogi Zilla. Friends IRL call me Yogi. A little dramatic uh, effect that you like that. Uh, I'm a dreamer, a gamer, an author of silliness, a disgruntled techie, a wild eyed entrepreneur and a fistful of happy emoji cons and sunshine. I run into the battle upon a glittering My Little Pony. Out of my mouth come laughing swords of peppermint and ginger. But, I'm only part of the TWT experience, the Time Wimey Tea Time experience. You're part of it too, and usually we have our co-hosts, but today I am flying solo again. Uh, so, uh, it's going to be uh, an interesting show. I'm going to try to keep it short. I say that every week, and then we end up going deep. There's always something to go deep on. We'll see who joins us live here in the uh, All Games chat. Morgana Freya! Thanks for the host. I gotta adjust that. That looks a little janky. Okay, I see why. Yes, 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 yes. And we are live. We are live. Let me see who's on uh, All Games. It's actually kind of quiet. No one's been talking. Okay, I see JIRV is talking in the chat and MXT. We're talking wrestling. Well, it seems to be a, a thing they do. Let me fix my boom here. I'm like punching down to talk right into the mic. That should be a little better. <clears throat> All right. So today is September 17th. And this episode was 60 of TWTT. And uh, the fall weather is finally, uh, finally here. So uh, that's the nice thing. It's getting cooler. I, I, I mean, I know we all love summer because you get to go to the pool or go hang out at, at the river or go to a lake or whatever, or go swim in the ocean, go to hang out on the beach, whatever people do in the summer. You know, barbecuing, that's my that's one of my favorite things. But, um, you know, the cooler weather is nice. You know, sp- spring and fall, those more in the middle kind of seasons, I like them better. Just... I find I feel, I feel like I'm more productive. Let, let me know if uh, I'm alone on this or not. I'm just I'm curious to see what you guys think. 
Uh, I may be a little distracted too, since I am flying solo. I'm also monitoring sound levels and making sure everything's alright. And I got a weird buzzing sound that I'm still trying to figure out. One day we'll get everything just right. One day. I've been doing podcasting for a long time, but when you're doing live and recording, and, you, and you're going live to multiple platforms, it gets a little trickier. So, today on uh, the Before We Go Deeper segment, we have a few announcements to share, including uh, plans for Extra Life. Uh, we've Many of us have done uh, fundraising, uh, charity stuff, but this year we're doing it as a team. Uh, so far, there's only two people officially confirmed that are actually on the roster, but we have uh, about, I would say, seven or eight people that are interested in doing it, but I think they're just kind of waiting to see who else gets on board. You know, lead the pack, because we're not going to set a schedule and really firm up plans until we have a, a nice stable of streamers. The plan right now is to kind of go for a whole week, and everybody works in shifts. If we have enough people to do that, we can cover each other. It's going to be it's gonna be tough, um, but we'll get more into that um, and also how that, that will impact our annual um, Halloween slash October bash. Uh, so, you know, obviously we're going to rally really hard in the next, you know, less than a couple of, less than two months now uh, for Extra Life, but uh, we still want to do something for Halloween as well, some horror-themed streams, so... I'm going to see if I come up with a nice event calendar. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. Maybe, uh, see, I'm, I'm going to make a bunch of graphics, like promotional material and stuff. Because stuff. people like sharing cool-looking graphics. Um, let's see. October, November 2016, event schedule, graphic. we got to make this a graphic. We have a schedule, but people don't really look at it as much as I'd like. So I think a nice little graphic. Infographics, people love those things, you know? Just almost as much as memes. Uh, f so folks, if you are interested in joining us live, we're uh, we're here every Saturday. Well, every other Saturday. Sometimes every Saturday, depending on mood and availability of people. Uh, and also, you know, we try to keep the show quality over quantity. Uh, but you can join us live at twitch.tv forward slash geekyantics or allgames.com. There's a little player link there. You can also listen to us, actually. I'm going to give you some more options. On Stitcher, the All Games live radio station is on there. That's a great option. Um, and also, if you go to our website, geekyantics.net, there's a video area where you can watch the show, or, you could, or it should pop up right on our homepage. So lots of ways to be part of the live show. And, of course, we also do the, you know, uh, post-production stuff on YouTube and on all the podcast feeds, Player FM, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, all that good stuff. Uh, it's too many to mention. Oh, we're also on Cast now. We're on Google Play. There's so many, so many things going on. It's great. I wanted to do something really time-sensitive, or share a time-sensitive announcement, better, better yet. Uh, and I'm going to probably mention this a few times during the show so you don't miss out on it. But uh, Humble Bundle, they're involved with charity. I don't know if you know about the Humble Bundle. Apparently, a lot of people still don't know about Humble Bundle. I want to tell you about Humble Bundle. Humble Bundle lets you get really, really awesome deals on video games. Um, they also do books and comics and other goodies. Um, so they have monthly and weekly bundles that they do. The monthly is a subscription-based thing. It's kind of like, like a loot crate type of thing. Um, and then they have different weekly bundles. And so then they have... Uh, Sales, flash sales and stuff in, their, in the Humble store. So they always have deals. I try to avoid the site sometimes because, you know, I'm trying to keep spending down to a minimum as much as possible. So, you know, I could keep food on the table for my family and invest in things that are really important. But, I mean, I tell you, every time I go there, there's so many things I want to just jump on. And right now they have something that I really feel everybody should jump on if you're in any way interested in game development. Maybe, maybe even if you just... Maybe you don't want have a game you want to really release, but you want to just tinker and get a feel for what's really involved. This is something I would recommend. It's the, the Humble Game Maker Bundle. And Game Maker Studio, they're, selling, they're giving you the pro version, which right there I think is $149 or $179.99 US. Uh, in the UK, uh, 
I don't know, I guess I worked out to 130, 140 quid, I don't know, I, I'm bad with the math. Um, and then in Canada, and I know it's going to be even more expensive, but it's still well worth it because if you spend $15 or more, you get to choose how much you want and a portion of that goes to charity. Uh, another portion goes to, it's split, basically split three ways, charity, um, the humble tip for them, you know, facilitating the deals and coordinating that. And then the developers. So, um, really good. And, uh, if you spend $15, $15 or more, one five, you will get hundreds of dollars worth of stuff. So you get Game Maker Studio Pro, right? Not, the highest one is not Pro, it's Enterprise. That's like an $800 package. So you're not going to get that. But you probably don't need that. Um, but what that, what they also throw in, if you, if you come in on the highest tier, you get a bunch of games made with, with the game studio, with Game Maker rather, and you also get source code from some of their best performing games, uh, made by the community or made by the folks over at YoYo Games as well. Um, and you get the modules, because the, the one bad thing about Game Maker Studio is that you might get it just to tinker and you think, oh, I'll just spend this much, not too bad, but then there's hidden costs of, uh, you have to get modules to publish for different platforms. Natively, I think it lets you do any of the consoles, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and uh, Nintendo platforms and all that. Um, but, if you want to do Android, or PC, or iOS, actually I think PC is included as well, but uh, if you want to do Android or iOS, those are defin definitely additional modules. I mean, they're, not, they're like 100 bucks or more for each one, so it's just to add up. Uh, you know, it's not a bad business model, but if you're someone that has a limited amount of money and you just buy this tool thinking that's all you need, and then you're going deep into a project, you're ready to launch, and then, oh, wait, I need this too, but I'm bootstrapping this and I don't have the money right now. You know, something to think about. So they're including all this at HumbleBundle.com forward slash GameMaker hyphen bundle. Let's go to HumbleBundle.com. Humble so hurry up. As I'm streaming right now, it is, it's about three days. <laughs> yeah, uh, Derek's, uh, Derek's giving me a hard time. Yogi is about to suggest people buy a game maker. All right. So, yes, Unity and Unreal are free. You can get things like Torque. But where, where Game Maker is good is if you don't want to go as deep into the source code, you want to have a more rap, agile, you know, rapid development, whatever you want to call it. Um, platform, it's perfectly serviceable, and there's no shame in it. You know, there's a place for that. I mean, I I, I do I program in different language languages. You know, I do Visual Basic, I do Java, I do C Sharp. Sometimes I just want to prototype something and, and work in a simple, uh, you know, uh, environment. So I think Game Maker it works in that regards because you could do a lot of the stuff just you know with the WYSIWYG kind of interface, just point and click. Um, it's not as simple as, say, an RPG maker or a game maker, but it's not as uh, source code intensive and maybe, you know, crazy on the learning curve as, like, something like Unity, Unreal, or, uh, I don't know, Blender, or or uh, Game App Kit. That's another good one, you know. So they all have their place, but it, this is a good, good, good ecosystem to kind of get your feet wet, you know. <laughs> Derek. See, Derek, Derek is like me. He he, come, he had the development background, so he kind of scoffs at these tools. You know, again, even people that have the, the, the experience of developing, designing games, things like this are nice. They have a place because, you know, it, it speeds up your development time. Um, of course, that comes at a premium. So, yeah, there are free tools, but, you know, 15 bucks. Come on. 15 bucks. At that price, you know, who's going to say no to that? That's, that's all I got to say. And this is not a sponsored message. Uh, we're not affiliated with, uh, with the Humble Bundle. I just like what they're doing. And when you got a deal like that, you can't say no. You know, then if, you know, if, you, if it turns out you don't like it, you only spend 15 bucks, not, you know, 100 bucks or 200 bucks or, gosh, 800 bucks. That's a little crazy. And don't forget, it's licensing fees, too, depending what platform you're, you're publishing. Like right now, 
uh, on iOS, 99 bucks yearly, which I think is kind of high for 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 indies. It's kind of a barrier to entry, but I guess it also creates uh, higher. You could argue that it, it prevents a lot of shovelware, so you know, it ensures higher quality content, not just everybody and our mama making an app. So I get it. So folks, if you're new to uh, Tea Time, and uh, you know, you're wondering what we're about. You may notice that we don't talk much Doctor Who, and that's because it shows you know it's kind of it's kind of evolved into just uh, deep yet casual conversations about just anything really geeky or creative. We get into the fandoms, you know, the sci-fi, the fantasy stuff, TV, film, you know, anime, uh, manga, whatever you know we feel like talking about. Of course, you know, Doctor always comes back to Doctor Who somehow. But uh, lately, we kind of just been going more into the kind of the uh, bells and whistles, the, the cogs, the gears, the little things behind the scenes of the things that we love, you know, the writing process, the creative process of things, the design logic. And that's kind of uh, that's kind of what we do now. So that's what this show is for, and uh, now with what's going on with Doctor Who this year, <laughs> we're definitely going to have to either consider going back to Classic Who or uh, just uh, talk other, you know, exploring other topics. So... That's where we're at. And right now, my drink of choice is some root beer. I'd be a little early for some carbonated drink, but... Uh... Let's see. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking at a uh, chat here, see, making sure I didn't miss anything here. <laughs> uh, Burr asked if you could sell Game Maker games. Yeah. They, uh... They're out there. You probably played them. Oh, and another thing they have, if you go to Humble Bundle, you don't have to pay anything. You can just sign up, subscribe with your email, and you'll get, like, three games that were made with Game Maker. So you get a feel for uh, what kind of games they have. Not, now I don't have to look, because I can't remember off the top of my head. One of them is called Space Mutant something. I played them briefly. They're, 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 so, they're solid games. Let's see. You get Three Way Mutant. Uh, Ninja X and Extreme Burger Defense. There you go. Actually, specifically, uh, the 10 second Ninja X Game Maker Edition. Just for signing up to the newsletter. So, not a bad deal. Uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm lucky at what else comes with this. So yeah, the bundle specifically, uh, if you paid, if you're at the $15 or more tier, you get all the things you get at the pay what you want tier, the middle tier which is now at twelve fifteen for dollars and fifteen cents, and then you get you get the HTML5 uh, publishing module, Android module, iOS module, and the Windows EWP module. Uh, and you get a bunch of source code for games like uh, Home. Oh yeah, that's one that I that, that I've played quite a bit. Home is pretty cool. Uh, it's kind of a point and click adventure kind of game. It feels very like early 90s, but it's, it's definitely serviceable. It's got like a creepy kind of environment, uh, ambiance to it. Solstice, uh, Cook Serve the Delicious, 10 Second Ninja X, Inc., Uncanny Valley, Galactic Missile Defense, Angry Chicken, Egg Madness, Shepard, all these things, you get all the source code for it. You know. I know it's a proprietary tool, but, uh, you know, I, I, I always feel that Whenever I, t I talk to people that are looking to get into game development, they don't struggle so much with the coding so much as the logic of it. You know, what makes for a good user experience? How do you design a good UI? Uh, you know, how do you manage your objects? You know, uh, you know, collision engines, physics, physics, stuff like that. You know, stuff to think about that, uh, you know, if, if you don't have the... the the math or uh, development background is a little, little, little overwhelming. A little overwhelming. So, I mean, especially these days, people don't really spend as much time as they used to in the source code uh, on the indie scene. A lot of people are using these rapid development tools where they only have to go to the hood, under the hood if they're doing something really specific or, or need to tweak some parameters or whatever. So, these tools exist for a reason. People uh, want to get their product out there as soon as possible. So this, you know, this cuts. Development time in half easily. 
I, I think people spend more time these days, at least the project I've been involved on and, and um, you know, colleagues of mine have talked about, they're spending more time with the graphic design because, you know, you need, you need all these assets, especially if you're doing, like, 2D, you know, sprite-based graphics, you know. The rendered stuff might be a little easier because once you develop the assets, you can manipulate them different ways. But if you're doing frame-for-frame -frame animation, whoo, there's a reason everything's computer-generated these days. And no one wants to do hand-drawn graphics, which is kind of a shame. Uh, I still like those classic Disney movies and anime before it was a lot of it started becoming, you know, CGI. Ah yeah, well, digital age and all. I'm really thirsty today. Um, so yeah, like we talked about a couple weeks ago in our last episode, episode 59. Um, kind of, you know, we got a lot of things in the pipelines right now. Um, I'm still debating a lot of things. Uh, I got to talk to find folks at all games and see if maybe I could choose a different live slot because uh, noon used to be the sweet spot, but then everybody that started showing up at noon, their schedules changed. And when, without that live engagement, it, it seems silly just kind of just broadcasting into the air. So maybe we'll be part of another block. Um, I, still I, I still think Saturday is good because not really many people doing Saturday podcasts, so it's nice to have an option there. If you're really hankering for that live experience, um, and in lieu of you know Doctor Who being pushed out till 2017, which we'll talk about a little in the, in the news, uh, which I forgot completely about last last time we did the show, uh, you know I'm thinking you know can we be more seasonal? Nah, no, I don't want to. There'll be too much too much dead space. Not a good thing. Um, I might skip some shows because it's been hard to have reliable co-hosts. And one-man shows are, I don't know, for me, I, I find them entertaining only for so long. I could talk forever, but I don't think people really enjoy a one-man show. Like, yeah. you, I mean, even if you got a great personality, it's, dialogue is just more fun. You get different perspectives, you know, and people challenge each other. Of course, we do tend to, tend to go longer when we do that, so. Um, That's good, good things and bad things. Uh, um, you know, we're, we're working on launching a mobile app. And, uh, you know, developing a bunch of things in-house and tools for podcasters and content creators and uh, updating our own site, geekyantics.net. Um, which, by the way, I, I want to say, allgames.com, that site is fantastic. There's been some issues lately. I know some people were telling us they were having issues with the site, but I think they've been resolved. So, um, go over there, check it out. Sorry. I cannot chew gum and walk at the same time, apparently. I'm trying to look ahead and see what we have um, lined up for the, the show and uh, look at our time. And I'm like, okay, I'm probably going a little long for the intro. So let's just jump ahead. This is our intergalactic star map. This, these are the adventures and ponderings that await you for this wonderful time when we tea time. First up we have, before we go deeper, a little community love, housekeeping, announcements for our all games and, all, and uh, geeky antics families. Um, and all that good stuff, you know, plugs, promos, all that, all that stuff, and the elusive CTA, the call to action, you know, we're going to share some of those to get people more involved in what we're doing. Um, then we have Who Knew, we actually have Doctor Who News, we're going to talk about, uh, basically the top, the theme's going to be, where is Doctor Who and where is uh, Torchwood? So we'll talk, talk a little bit about that. In Creative Corner, we're going to talk about the next small thing, continuing that series, it'll be part five. And just kind of talk more about some of the stuff that I've been working on and some of the folks in our community have been working on. And then, if time permits, in the gaming verse, we'll discuss Battlefield 1. I know it's, uh, it's been a couple of weeks uh, since the open beta was out, but I'm still thinking about the game, and I'd like to talk about my, my thoughts on it, because I think some folks were really hard on it, and I, I don't know, I really enjoyed it. And we'll talk a little bit about Earthlock which was uh, one of the Xbox games with gold, uh, Hearthstone, etc., etc. All the stuff we're playing. All, all the games. All the games. So before we go deeper, keep in mind, folks, we keep this show family-friendly. It's probably the only show we keep family-friendly um, on the Geeky Answers Network and uh, probably on the All Games Network. Uh, it's, it's hard not to cuss or have uh, adult themes on, on a show. So we we do we might tread that line, but we keep it pretty PG for the most part. Actually, 
generally we keep it kind of G-rated. Um, or at least as, as G-rated as Doctor Who is, because Doctor Who has adult themes in there, and it's still considered a family show. Though, not so much as uh, the Sarah Jane Chronicles. That's definitely more uh, family-friendly. That's like the softer side of Doctor Who, which, that show's actually really good. I, I actually quite enjoy that. do 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 Uh... Let's see, I skip that, skip that. We have a new Discord server if anyone wants to join on us. Join us on that. Um, you could tweet me at YogiZilla or tweet the network at Geeky Antics and I'll give you the Discord info. It's also on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash Geeky Antics. And if you do the exclamation mark, the bang symbol, uh, Discord, it should come up. Or TS, because we used to have TeamSpeak, but now it's Discord. Or call in. It should also work. Let me test right now. Oh, it's not working. It's not working now. The bot, the bots may be uh, on break. Huh? Plus, then I do that. But usually it works. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to. Oh, there, Discord. Bang to Discord. Someone probably got rid of the other commands, or maybe it's just being funky. I'll have to look at that later. Uh, all right. Um. We have a few kind of openings and uh, goodies, things, ways you can get involved. That's the best way to kind of group them. First, we need podcast hosts. And uh, that's something that I hear consistently from people. I see so many great shows that die, off, die, die out um, or they, they keep going, but you can tell that they're not the same. They're struggling. And, it you know, it always comes down to just having reliable people. You know, I, you know, people say, well, I don't really like to talk, or I don't, I don't do podcasts, so I, I can't do it. it well, uh, unless you live under a rock and you never have any human interaction, and you, or, you know, you don't have any of your own ideas or thoughts or opinions, I'm pretty sure you could do a podcast. You have to be a very, very boring person. To not be able to be good on a po in a podcast environment, there's uh nuances, there's best practices you'll pick up as you do it more. But it's not like people go to a podcast school and they suddenly become you know podcast you know mavens. And it's not like everyone comes from a traditional radio background, so they just transition into podcasting. This is the thing that I find funny. You see people on Facebook, on Twitter, you know. Snapchat, Instagram, whatever people are using these days. It's all the same, really. Reddit, you know, people really opinionated there. Oof. Talk about caustic. Caustic glibness. Dangerous. People have opinions. They just, they just like to share in a particular way. And I guess in the if you're just writing comments, it's easier because you're not as accountable. You get hide behind the, the guard of anonymity. And when you're people can actually hear your voice, suddenly you're vulnerable. But see that that's that's part of the beauty. You you'll think th through your thought your your beliefs more, your opinions more and and challenge yourself and challenge others around you. That's that's good. And you get a conversation going and it's usually more constructive than just the hot fire that people spit online. <laughs> and that's putting it kind of mildly, right? Uh, stream team, we get we're getting tons of apps for people that want to be part of our stream team, and I love it. But the honest truth is that most of the people just aren't a good fit because the only thing they want to do is be on a roster, and then maybe occasionally say they're part of the Geeky Antics uh, stream team, but then they won't like you know cross promote us. They won't you know talk about our friends over at all games, and that's what we're trying to do is just spread that love. So just having a headcount, eh, anyone could do that. We want people that are actually going to collaborate and go beyond Twitch or YouTube gaming or, or Hitbox, whatever, or Beam, whatever you're using, and, like, join on a podcast, uh, be in the chat, leave comments. These are things that don't take up much time. I mean, leaving a comment, people, you would think people believe that their fingers will fall off if they take, like, a minute to put together a, a decent comment, and I, and I mean something, I mean, heck, if it's even just awesome, that's better than nothing, but a, a quality comment's going to take you, what, five, ten minutes at most, if you want to leave something a little more meaty, you know, and actually get some conversation going, 
But uh, people don't see the value in that, and there's a lot of value. You know, you it's a good networking opportunity. It could establish you as a subject matter expert. It might open up doors. It could drive traffic back to your site, or whatever your online thing is, because you get that link juice. What what's there not to love? Besides, everybody everybody knows deep down inside they love to hear themselves talk, and they like to, you know share their opinion. It's just when it comes to comments and certain opportunities, suddenly people just get uh I don't know. They get stage fright I guess? I don't know. It's weird. I mean I do understand what, what what's driving the behaviors, but it's still baffling to me. Testimonials, uh this is something we've been asking for. Um kinda like reviews where you leave them on iTunes or email them to us, mail at geekyantics.net. Uh, you just want to know uh, why you love our shows, whether or or a, our show, whichever show is your preference. Even if it's not this one, that's fine. I, my feelings will not be hurt. Anybody has a preferred show, you know. I would rather hear from people that pick and choose a, a show from, you know, our our offerings rather than say, "Oh, I love all your shows," but they're really not listening. <laughs> so you can send those again, uh, testimonials, mail like geekyantics.net. Let us know why you love the Geeky Ads Network. Let it, let. Let me know why, why you love what we're doing. Uh, let me know if you agree, disagree, something. But uh, if we give you some kind of feeling, especially if special positive feelings, make you feel some kind of way, share that. Let us know how we're doing. Maybe we could do more of, of those things that you love. And I apologize if you hear me keyboard. I, I do like the mechanical keyboards. I can't really do quiet keyboards. I probably should for podcasting at least, but... I just love the feel of a mechanical keyboard. I'm old school like that. The biggest thing of these, though, this is what I really want to push. If there's nothing else you take away from this, Extra Life on November 5th. That's when we start the uh, stream marathon. But right now, through that date, through the week, I try to go long streaming on the Geeky Antics channel on Twitch TV for us Geeky Antics. We can try to stream shifts a whole week if possible. It's going to be tough, but uh, if everybody could just share the link, donate, and ask us to do the same, it would be awesome. Or just share the link. At least that. That's going to cost you a Tell a friend about what we're doing, right? And remember, the, this is a legit charity. Extra Life is for Children's Miracle Network. Uh, their uh, member hospital. Each uh, streamer, each uh, participant will be supporting their local a hospital in the Children's Cool Network. It's going to make it so that you know, families that are not in a good financial position can get medical attention that the children need. Especially now in the post Obama world where healthcare is not affordable by any means. I do not care what they call it the Affordable Health Act as a business owner. I call Shenanigan on that. Don't get me started on that one. I don't like it's up whenever we talk about politics. Um, consider, you know, some things and help some big change. Do it for children. Uh, the link is geekyantics.com/life. Of course, I have details on Facebook, Facebook.com for geeky antics. Um, and if you're doing extra on your own or for network team, that's cool. Promote it, you know. I just, I just, you know, stay focused on your thing. You know, maybe the something we donate to other campaigns, recipient that way. Um, I, I'm to that. I would like to draw to that arrangement. A lot of things to do. Uh, small business is a great, small business to be more giving extra, you know, drop fifty, hundred, you know, for government. I don't know. If they spend, they would on maybe Google Ads, where they're paying per click, and they're lucky if you know a hundred clicks amounts to a paying customer. You know, this goes to a good cause. The organization is transparent about how to use the money. You know, and it gives you a, makes you feel better about yourself. You know, we can all use a little redemption <laughs> for all the. Messed up things we do, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a win-win-win scenario. An exposure. 
So why not? So that, again, that's Extra Life. Spread the word. Geekyantics.net for us has Extra Life. I'm not sure if all games are doing extra anything Extra Life. I know some of the individual teams usually do stuff. But I haven't heard anything as of yet. So maybe I missed it. Um, but if there is something there, we'll, I, I, I would like to get us collaborating on that. Um, uh, da -da 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 -da. I'm going to skip ahead at all this stuff. Uh, if you can't join us live, another good way to connect with us is our, is our voicemail line. And you can also text us there, 646-801-2149. Again, 646-801-2149. And uh, that's a U.S. number, so long-distance charges may apply. International rates may apply, depending on where you are in the world. Um, you can also visit us again, facebook.com, for this Geeky Antics. Um, if you'd like to leave us a voice message, but you can't do phone for some reason, you know, you don't, or you don't know how to, how to use VoIP, uh, you can leave us a short MP3, uh, a minute or less ideally, at mail at geekyantics.net if you want it for any of our other shows, or for this show, TWTT at geekyantics.net. And let's get some Whovian love out there. I know you guys are listening, I see the download numbers, but everybody's like on major lurk status. I mean, it's crazy, because I remember people used to comment on all our videos, and uh, we listened to their feedback, we executed upon it, and now people got quiet, so, come on, don't be shy, well, it's nice over here, <laughs> who knew, we got some, uh, we mainly got, uh, Doctor Who news, and we got a little, little light gaming news, and some light tech news, <laughs> and very, very light on those things, so again, Game Maker Humble Bundle, listen, I don't care if you're super a super awesome programmer. Time is something we can't mess around with. If you get a tool on the cheap, I mean 15 bucks or more, depending on how much you want to pay, because part of it does a portion of the purchase of the Humble Bundle, do you go to charity. You know, you want to save some time, add another tool to your, to your toolbox, Game make that game maker humble bundle is a no brainer. Fifteen bucks. There's three days left. It helps out a good cause, and it gives you some cool some cool goodies. I mean, I don't know. Am I crazy? I I don't see how uh, this is something we have to overthink. I mean, you know, Visual Studio is cool. Uh, Unity, Unreal is cool. I don't know. Maybe using an old build of a C plus plus builder. Why not? GK128 in the chat says, Chinese places give way too much food in lunch portions. That's kind of the point. Chinese is probably the best bang for the buck. You know, I'm a pizza guy, but I'm gonna, it's like one of those things we rarely order out. But when we do, I want to make sure we get the most bang for the buck. So, you know, pizza, you get good leftovers, but it, I, I'm fine. As much as I enjoy it, it doesn't fill you up the way like Chinese food does, and Chinese food, those portions, that's that's really part of the reason you do Chinese takeout, you know. And you know we have a big family, so when we order, we have to get like uh, we we usually get like the sesame chicken, which mostly everybody gets, but then some people don't like the sesame chicken, so we have to get chicken wings, of course. So we get like two orders of those, and like I said, again, big family. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, we got like two order large orders of pork fried rice. We might get uh, some beef lo mein or pork lo mein. Maybe chicken lo mein, depending. Sometimes chicken lo mein is hit or miss for some reason. Pork or beef, they usually it's hard for them to mess it up. I don't know. This is how it works out. Pretty much any Chinese takeout place you go to anywhere in the states. I, I can't speak to the rest of the world really uh, confidently, but let us know how if it's like that for you. Because uh, Chinese takeout is something like you see. It's an international phenomenon, right? It's kind of neat how that works out and. There's not that much variance to it. Like, with pizza, the local recipes and the water can affect it big time. With Chinese food, it's, it's a whole different thing. It's that MSG. I don't want the MSG-free stuff. No way. The MSG is what gives it the flavor. I know it's an addictive substance, but it's delicious. Uh, what else do we get? Oh, Crab Rangoon. Sometimes we get wontons. Um, I, like, I like chicken satay. That's good. Could they put like a teriyaki type of sauce in there, or, or hoisin sauce? Hoisin sauce got the, it's like teriyaki with a little garlic and some like spices in there. Maybe I think it has a little bit of cumin, but hoisin sauce is so good. Oh, so good. 
or black bean sauce is a good, that's a good, that's a good sauce. You can get those on some rice cakes. See, Jiki's probably not even listening to the live stream, and I'm, I'm responding to his thought about Chinese food and going off on a, on a rant over here. Anyway, so, we have a big uh, question to address here. The elephant in the room for us Whovians, you know, whether you're a Nuvian or a, a classic fan, you know, you're all welcome. Why isn't there any Doctor Who this year? You know, it's funny because uh, a lot of people are like, well, thank God, because P- Peter Capaldi needs to get out of here. Well, he, he he's going to be on for season 10. That's a given. <laughs> so, sorry if you don't like him. I, I don't I don't see the big hate. I mean, I can understand it, but I think it's a little overstated how much people don't like him. He's Peter Capaldi plays... At least, you know, they write him this way, so a lot of things you may not like is the way they write him. Now, if it's his acting or the fact that he's hard to understand at times because of that deep Scottish accent, uh, I, all right, that's a fair concession. That's a fair point. But he is the closest thing. His character is the closest thing to, like, the classic doctors. I, I get traces of John Pertwee, uh, Patrick T- Trotton, and Tom Baker, and they're like they're kind of mixed up into one. But the thing is, he's not young, he's not goofy. You know, he doesn't have the physicality of uh, Matt Smith or whatever. I, you know, he, he's not a heartthrob. I guess is the big thing. <laughs> oh, GK enjoyed the rant. Food talk is always the best talk. Yeah, that's a a a, a, a kind of a underlying theme whenever I podcast. We just love the freaking rants. It's kind of bad. I think I'm in a perpetual state of hunger all the time. So, so anyway, I, I, I looked into this whole thing, and no one really seems to have firm answers on why season 10 won't be happening until 2017. It's just, it's, it seems very speculative. It's, uh, oh, Moffat and the BBC are fighting, which I definitely don't doubt, because Moffat seems to be... Everything that the actors say or, or the way people dance around the the issues, you know, look at the uh, first season of, of The New Who. Chris Eccleston, I think, is a phenomenal doctor, and he could have been one of the greats. But he had a one-season run. That's that's short even for, you know, Doctor Who. I mean, most people commit to at least two years. Um, and it seems like three years is the max nowadays because people don't want to be... I guess typecasted or identified as being the Doctor. It's kind of like Michael Keaton with the Batman role. Yeah, okay, whatever. I guess everybody has that one big role, though. If that's if that's your if that's your peak, why not embrace it? If you if you say you're, you know everybody is also all these actors also say that oh I'm a Doctor Who fan. I, I love the Doctor. I've always wanted to play the Doctor, so this is the dream role. But then they only do it for two or three seasons, so. Yeah. I get it. You don't want to focus on just one project, but it's not like you're filming all year long. I guess Moffat, Stephen Moffat, really is difficult to deal with. Uh, and of course, he's also working on a new season of Sherlock, which I know people are really hankering for. Um, but this is going to be Moffat's last season with the show. I guess maybe they need more time. So they want to have season 10 next year and have enough time to look for the next showrunner and have a big announcement right after, right on the heels of season 10. Um, personally, I, I think this is encouraging just because maybe it'll give people a chance to watch season 9 again and really look, look at it. Maybe binge watch Doctor Who and watch, you know, season 1 through, through 9 and kind of get a better feel for what what each doctor brings to the table. I, you know, Matt Smith, I didn't think I was going to like him, and he grew on me, you know? And I think a lot of times we, we Whovians, we, we go into Doctor Who, and we see a new doctor, and we're always, we're so attached to the last one, we're like, yeah, I guess. And, uh, which is weird, because you would think we'd be conditioned to not get so attached, but we do. I mean, uh, Doctor Who's brilliant because they, they, you know, decades ago, they figured out one of the best way, best ways to deal with recasting, have uh, companions, 
that rotate out and and have the the main character regenerate so if you have a new face you can easily explain it and that, that it's built into the narrative and, you know when you look at the like i look at a uh, the dc universe and the marvel universe you know all the movies and shows they have there i love them i love these superhero shows i love these comic book based shows but the problem is you know when when people when contracts slap laps uh, or people get tired of doing the role guess what now they gotta put someone new in there and what's the, what are they gonna do start from scratch because uh, it'll be weird to carry on a storyline or a universe with the new face but why just do it people eventually will accept it because like starting from scratch every time you have a new actor in a role man i mean how many times in the past 10 years had you know, heck, just the not last, what, last, yeah, about the last 10 years, how many different Spider-Mans have we seen? Many different Batmans? Supermans? It's crazy. And now, like, you know, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, Iron Man, I think he's about done. Chris Evans is done with Captain America, so what's going to happen after they're gone? They're kind of holding everything together. So, I love root beer. So, I don't know. Back to Doctor Who, though. We do have a few hints, and I'll put this in the chat. Of, uh, this is one of those kind of clickbaity sites. They just grabbed a bunch of stuff. But for those that are interested in Doctor Who, this is from cultbox.co.uk. And they're kind of just breaking down. I hope this doesn't have one of those stupid autoplay video ads. Not they're good. Um, so one thing we see that I find interesting. I see a familiar face in the background. This chubby dude. I can't place him right now. But I know he's been there before. I swear. Uh, then we have a girl. It's really, really cute. She's got a nice puffy afro. I'm kind of jelly. Um, I'm getting, she's making me think of a combination, like right off on the face valley, I, I think she is going to be like a Martha, Martha meets Clara maybe, so some people are kind of uh, throwing around, and she is back, I mentioned that because uh, Doctor Who has got a nice flack in the past for not being very diverse, but it did keep throwing in black characters to let people know, hey, yeah, look, we're diverse. Oh, wow. The thing about diversity is, like, diversity doesn't mean, like, especially racial, it's not a black thing. There's, you know, there's Asians, different types of Asians, and Latinos, and there's a huge spectrum there. So, like, where, where are they at? Do they not, not exist in the UK? Where's our love? <laughs> uh, that's all right. I'm not a, it's not a big deal. I, if it's a good story, yeah, the rest is just, uh, you know, ice cream cake. Uh, so, the showrunner, of course, is uh, Stephen Moffat. Last final year as a showrunner. This is a quote he had there. I'll, I'll, Stephen Moffat said, said, I'll be finishing up on the best job in the universe and keeping the TARDIS warm for the new showrunner, Chris Now, also, they have a new uh, showrunner. This is announced with very little fan feel. Chip said, during Stephen Moffat's plan, the story of 2017, it's clear he'll be going out with a bang. See, my uh, also quoted saying, I'm just embarking on the new season. It's terrifying. I have to make all that again. Uh, so, is this still production there? Did they start I mean, This is the older time this was updated a couple of days ago. Oh, three days ago. But I don't know where they're at with all that stuff. Again, it's very hush when the shooting and production going on, but uh, now we'll be probably season as a doctor. Some of you are going yes, please, and some of you, and, and a very few of you, well, most of you are probably saying yes, please, and some of you, like me, are like, well, let's let's give him another chance. I want to see where where they go with this. I, I feel hopeful about it. I I enjoy season nine overall. So Peter Capaldi will continue playing the twelfth Doctor until at least 2017's Christmas special. 
He has apparently not yet decided if he'll stay on for a fourth season when Chris Chibnall takes over as showrunner. Has there already been three seasons for him? Oh, wow, it has, right, because he did come on as season eight. Wow, time flies by. I forgot this is, uh, this is going to be his third season as a doctor. So, yeah, can he break that streak? That, that, that kind of needs to, I kind of want that to happen. I know some of you, some of you out there, are like Doctor, I'm not really big on it, but it's a lot of history here. So this could be his, this could be something really groundbreaking for this series if someone would go longer than three years, and that someone is not Tom Baker. I mean, who else went longer than three years? I can't even think. But Tom Baker, I know, had one of the longest runs, if not the longest. Um, see, Moffat said to this, I have no reason to suppose that I'm writing out a Doctor. Peter is loving the role. And and long may he do so. Peter Capaldi said in a quote, "This could be my final year." <laughs> that commitment, though. Steve Moffat said Peter Capaldi is going nowhere. <laughs> Man, some, they're not on the same page. Huh, huh. And by the way, I'm gonna play a little bumper from from a uh, little quick sound bit from our friend. Uh, did I put it in? Did I have? Do I have it up? This is a classic for you guys. Oh, no, I guess I don't have it in the, on the soundboard. Oh, no. No. Isn't that good? Eh, I thought I had it. It's going to be a, Stan, a, a nice little bit from Stan. Oh, next time, next time, next time. Uh, da -da -da -da. The Mirror reported Peter Capaldi has agreed to stay on for at least one more season, so... These are all the sources they're saying to support what they what they, what they just said. Uh, film. When the filming began, filming began on June Monday, June twentieth, two thousand sixteen, and is expected to finish at the end of March two thousand seventeen. Wow, that's a long. That feels like a long stretch. They must be doing a lot of on, on location stuff, or they might, must have taken some breaks. Maybe the actors have other commitments too. I don't know. Um, season ten will be twelve episodes. Preceded by 2016's Christmas special, and followed by 2017's Christmas special. So there will be a Christmas special this year. Ah, you need to have a tradition. So at least they're doing that. So we're gonna get technically two Christmas specials this year for that season. That's pretty cool. I love the Christmas special. It's a nice tradition. I know. I think a big part of my love for for uh, Doctor Who. Is that it, it's kind of a security blanket. It's like I don't really watch. See, I, I do keep with Doctor Who, but like I don't really watch Sesame Street that much anymore. Once in a while, I watch it with the kids, but it's not as popular as it used to be. But knowing it's still going is awesome. Oh, we have some uh, some Doctor Who talk here. Capaldi sucks. The new writing sucks. This is Derek saying this. It's to the point where they just make up stuff at the last five minutes to fix the story. It's and and it's creepy with this old guy saying how much he loves this young girl. <laughs> And the sunglasses are dumb. Okay, so yeah, the, the sunglasses, you know, every doctor has their stick. And I think that sunglass thing is very tongue-in-cheek. Because people say, it's not a young doctor. So, like, you know, he's doing the sunglasses. And then he also has his axe, you know, his guitar. And, like, that's him trying to be young. Um, I, d I agree. I don't like the whole... Lo the whole romantic interest. See, there wasn't as much. Like, I feel like the other doctors were much deeper with that romantic interest. Um, and Clara kind of became too big in the in the Doctor Who universe. Now that they're separating from that, I think it's going to help out a lot more. Because, I mean, they pigeonhole themselves with, with the whole Clara bit by making her, like, this indispensable fixture in, in the Doctor's story. Like, She's part of his past, present, and future, and I, I know the Time Lords see time differently, but it just got crazy. The, like, River Song was, was, was bad enough, but they took the Clara thing even further. Um, I do agree that, like, the resolutions on a lot of the stories, like, and this is a Moffat issue. Moffat, when he has most or complete creative control, he does these story arcs, and he does these episodes where it's all this these long setups and then the payoff usually doesn't match the setup you know and, and it's usually really cheaply worked out um 
But last year, it's, it's interesting, too, because last year they had a lot of different producers involved. But I think, if I recall, Stephen Moffat was a, a writer on more of them. I think, I know, I know for sure he did, I want to say he did the first two and the last two for sure. Like, production, writing, like, end-to-end, -end, he was there. And, you know, they have other people credited, but it was pretty much his baby. Because that's, every time Moffat's build, he, he, he's pretty much doing everything. So, I don't know. Um, personally, I would be more encouraged if we get a preview of Season 10 and we see who's writing each episode. Um... The thing about it is, like, you have you have different writers. I, I think that's another problem, is that sometimes it feels like these different writers want to do a different kind of style. Like they had a a couple of Neil Gaiman episodes which were phenomenal, but they didn't feel seem to fit what they were doing for that season. Um, so you know you get these like episodes that are great on their own, but they don't fit in. Like they feel like they're just shoehorned in. So maybe they they need a showrunner that could allow the writers enough creative freedom to have different tones and different kind of sub story subplots so to speak, but still feed into something wonderful that goes on different themes throughout the whole season. Like, like and I don't mean just an ongoing story arc. I mean like just thematically there needs to be ongoing themes. Like, I don't know. Uh, I want to say season two or three with David Tennant. They had a lot of, like, kind of horror elements in there. There was just some straight-up spooky stuff. And I always think of David Tennant, and, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong in this assessment, but I always think of him as the most em uh, emotional of the, of the new Doctors. He's very pensive. He always had that kind of, you know, people joke that it's kind of a poop-your-pants face. But, he, he, you know, you could always tell he, w he was burdened and is thinking about, like, the, the, the loss he's experienced. You know, because he's, you know, it's off the heels of losing Rose Tyler. That was a big thing. They really played that up really well. Um, just a lot of regret burdening him. And then, so, I felt like a, a lot of season three, I believe, had that, that um, theme of solitude. And, and maybe... Maybe the unavoidable nature of fate, even. Um, so when you had an episode like, um, what was it, Blink? Where you didn't really see much of the Doctor, even though it was a really, it felt out of place at first. It fit into the overall storytelling of that season. I mean, I know David Tennant, you know, is, is I, I feel like most people are either Team Matt Smith or, T, or Team uh, David Tennant. Because those were like you know the strongest, but I most people I think are are more at, uh, fans of David Tennant, and I think there's a good reason for that. The writing was at its strongest, arguably, at least for New Who. Um, you had a good combination of kind of soapy elements, the horror in there, um, tension, action. You know, it, it it was just really well done, and I mean. Gosh, you're talking, you know, seven, eight years ago, right? My math any good? Yeah. That's around the time that we were still... That's around the time when uh, Torchwood started up. I mean, Captain Jack comes into the thing. Like, this is like... That was a really strong era for Doctor Who. So I think right now... The only thing I could really say in all in all my uh, thinking out loud and <laughs> stumbling for words is that yeah they they are fi they are trying to find their groove again they're misstepping a little bit but I'm not writing off Capaldi completely I do think they need to ease up on the gimmicks and just focus on his strengths as an actor and 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 stick to their guns he's a curmudgeonly kind of doctor they promised there wouldn't really be any romantic inclination he wouldn't be like typical kind of womanizer of sorts you know doctor has always been kind of cocky kind of suave and this doctor i think needs to be more of a get down to business kind of guy 
Um, and, and Peter Capaldi, at the very least, has that face. They just need to write him better. So, I don't blame Capaldi. Again, the only thing I can say about Capaldi is that accent is rough for our poor Western ears. At least for mine. <laughs> Alright, what else do we have here? Uh, da -da 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 -da. So Steve Moffat uh, says that he signed up, signed on to do 13 more episodes of Doctor Who. That's including the two Christmas episodes and the full season 10 uh, offering. Uh, he's trying to argue for slightly more than that, though. Interesting. So I feel like they're trying to push him out the door in a way, and like. Moffat, when he when Moffat hits, he hits really hard. But when he misses, oh boy! <laughs> and I think we linger on the really bad things. So right now we're looking at a spring 2017 air air date. Uh, the Sh Charlotte Moore controller of BBC One was quoted cool saying, "I have decided to schedule Stephen's big finale series in spring 2017 to bring the nation together for what will be a huge event on the channel." Okay, that's that's your justification. All right, maybe. 2016 is spoiled with national moments, including the Euros and the, and the and Olympics, and I want to hold something ba big back for 2017. I promise it will be worth the wait. Ooh, that's a high bar to set, but that makes sense. Not not to have other things vying for the attention. I, I could buy that, I guess. That's, that's probably the most solid thing we've seen with you know in regards to why they 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 put it off. But at the same time, uh, I feel that's going to give people more reason to lose sight of Doctor Who. They need to have something. Like a spin-off series or something. I don't know. Doctor Who marathons? Make, make a big event. I don't know. Make it so that one of the seasons of Doctor Who is available for streaming free for anyone. This is really crazy. I don't know. Fill that void. I don't know. They could, there needs to be something there. Nah, maybe I'm spoiled. Maybe I sound entitled, but... Uh, I feel like it's it's a good business move and it's a bad business move at the same time. Private, Private Eye reported, BBC staff have recently been informed that showrunner Stephen Moffat's commitments to his other hit show, Sherlock, meaning that there will be no full series of Doctor Who in 2016. So, that, so again, that goes back to what people were saying the original reason was. And I guess uh, BBC came back with the, their damage control statement. <laughs> Uh, Pete Pearl Mackey was officially revealed as the new Doctor Who companion on Saturday, April 23rd, 2016. She will join the show in 2017 as a character named Bill. What? What? Why is, why is her name Bill? Bill, is that like a throwback to Billy Piper? That's not fair. Uh, there's a there's jokes there. Oh uh, boy, I can see the, the trolling coming. Uh, Pearl Mackey, said, Pearl Mackey said, I'm incredibly excited to be joining the Doctor Who family. It's such an extraordinary British institution. I couldn't be prouder to call the TARDIS my home. Peter Capaldi is such a brilliant actor, and his Doctor is such a wacky and wonderful character. I can't wait to see what adventures are in store for him and Bill, and Bill throughout time and space. Ah. It, it kind of hurts my heart that she's describing him as, uh, <laughs> as wacky. Wonderful. I, I like. I think he's wonderful. The wacky thing, the fact that that's something that people are billing him as, that's, that probably shouldn't be. <laughs> Derek H. Uh, by the way, he's the, he's J Derek H. Is pretty much a showrunner in all games. I mean, Scott Rubin is the man behind the man, and he, he's the owner. But, uh, Derek H. is the one that makes things happen. I'm enjoying his chat here today. He said that's because because Sherlock is like four episodes each season. Yeah, uh, what do they? I guess they argue high production value. Yeah. Oh man, my mic just turned off. That's not good. Hold on a second. Oh, there we go. Sometimes uh, recording software randomly goes. So I don't know how long. It's probably just been for. I keep that sound level in front of me. It's probably only been for like five, ten minutes, but there may be some lost discussion. So for those that missed it, uh, we're talking. We've been talking about uh, basically talking about what we know about uh, Doctor Who season ten, uh, based on what 
the all the stuff that has been aggregated by coatbox.co.uk. They have a cool little uh, Facebook page too, Coatbox TV News. Uh, again, it's it's a little borderline content farm, clickbaity, but they've done a good job of grabbing all the stuff here. So there's other things they have here. What would the new companion be like? Who else will be joining the TARDIS? Who are the writers? Uh, who are the directors? What should we expect from the Doctor? Where and when will the Doctor be, the story be set? Will there be two part stories again? Uh, let me just go. We'll t we'll cover this and then we'll circle back. There's a lot of stuff here. Missy coming back. Missy is coming back. Michelle Gomez. I do like her a lot. I think she's a fun character. A good uh, incarnation of the Master. Which monsters and villains will come be back? Nah, I, I don't really care so much about it. I want to see new stuff. I, the, the, the Doctor Who universe needs to be more expansive. This is the time they need to take advantage of to reinvent themselves and add more variety. Um, so, what was the thing we were talking about? So, will there be two-part stories? See, so Moffat said, we're going back to more singles in Season 10. Two-parters worked brilliantly last year. Well, some people might argue. But somehow with the new companion, you want the simpler version of the show. Next year, we, w we will have some two-parters, but it will be back to one-parters mostly. All right. I was very happy to get rid of two-parters when I did, and in Season 9, I was very happy to bring them back. Something else will happen in Season 10. And, and the two-parters, again, that's something that people have mixed feelings about because they start off with a cool premise. Uh, what was one that I enjoyed? The one where they were in that underwater... It was like a sea, sea based type of thing, a research center, and there were the the ghosts, and people had to like they, they had to find ways to lock the lock out the ghosts and all that stuff. That was pretty interesting, and then like the, there was the big thing where we saw uh, the ghost of the doctor, and we were like, whoa, th does that mean he died? And people started realizing that the ghosts were actually the people that were dying on that ship, the other crew members. Um, that one was pretty pretty well done. I, I I found it pretty tense, if not scary. All right, what else did it say here? I'll just jump to the big stuff. There's a lot of stuff here. So some of the writers they'll have uh, Peter Harness, Catherine Tregena, Peter Capaldi. Oh, well, no, he's not a Peter. He's not a writer. He's uh talking about how he he's got how they have great writers. Uh, okay, so these are not necessarily confirmed. Kevin Tregena, uh, Jamie Matheson. So Jamie Matheson submitted a load of ideas for the next series. And he says that hopefully that Doctor Who camp is still happy with him. It's been great so far. Jamie Matheson. I can't put a face to it, to the name. Mark Gatiss, of course, you know. He likes the ginger if you've ever seen one. Uh, he said, we've not even explored the whole of Britain, never mind the universe. And if you imagine doing a story in the Robert Louis Stevenson's Edinburgh or India, things like that, I think I can make every each episode very distinctive. So I'd, I'd love to do more like that, I suppose, and just keep reinventing. Neil Gaiman, I am determined to write for Peter Capaldi. As long as Peter is, the do is Doctor Who, I will write for him. See, that's encouraging because I like Neil Ga Gaiman. Mirror Mask? Anybody? What was that series? Derek, you might remember. What was that series? The BBC series where they're... Neil Gaiman was the producer, writer for it. And they're like underground. I need to find that again and watch that. Ah, what was it called? Undertow? Dark City? No. I can't think of the name now. It's, a, it's one of the old older sh series out there not red dwarf or darkness falls uh old but old enough i want to say early 90s late 80s maybe that's a good show but you know your gamer has a very interesting style it's it's very it's, it reminds me of tim burden but less dark and more whimsical or or bizarre perhaps. So that is exciting that he has faith in him at least. Uh, Neil Gaiman also said, uh, "Now I'm starting. 
I'm just sort of hoping that I can get one done while Peter Capaldi's still a doctor because it would be very a very sad thing if I lost my chance to write for a grumpy Scottish doctor. <laughs> uh, what else? That's some interesting stuff. Uh, what else? What else do we expect from the doctor? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of interesting insight there. I'll leave that for you guys to read. Uh, the show notes, are, again, are public. They'll be in our podcast description, our YouTube description, all that good stuff. So you can uh, check it out for yourself. But another thing I've, I've been thinking about, you know, in lieu of the fact that Doctor Who is taking this break, um, and there's no real Doctor Who content unless you keep up with the comics, uh, play Doctor Who Legacy, or listen to the audio books, the audio dramas which is something that I keep wanting to do, but it's expensive in terms of time and money needed to get into it. Uh, I've tried to, re- and I believe me, I try to reach out to Big Finish, and I'm like, well, you know, we have one of the top, literally, I showed them our metrics and talk about a fanfare, and said, we got one of the top Doctor Who shows out there right now. Uh, you know, of course, the numbers are, are dropping because we're not talking much Doctor Who. We're trying to cater to a wider audience, so it's, it's tough. But they're like, yeah, we don't really, we're not really doing anything sponsorship related. And I think it's because they, they're kind of under the grip of BBC still. They're not really independent. That's a shame. Because if we could get like a couple of promo review copies or something, that'd make it easier for us to kind of jump into that world. Um, but, you know, we'll see what we can do. Maybe we can find some, work out some kind of discount dealio for our audience and uh, that we could take advantage of that as well. That'd be cool. So if anybody has connections or any contacts... That can help us get more into that Doctor Who content. That'd be awesome. Because um, usually we can leverage our networks and our, and our affiliates and the numbers. But sometimes even that's not enough. Sometimes it's just about who you know and timing. You got to be persistent sometimes. So anyway, all that to say is that it's been around five years since we last saw any new Torchwood. That was uh, Miracle Miracle Days uh, when it, you know, that kind of made for TV movie and it left the series up in the air um, I didn't like the direction they went in to be honest and it was very bold but I think it really limited what they could do but I guess you know that what they're basically looking at is torch would be coming a way to tell more of Captain Jack's story I mean spoilers if you never finished Torchwood but <sighs> so spoiler alert next five 10 seconds, skip that, but everyone dies. Yes. So, <laughs> it's very Josh Whedon, Firefly ish, uh, Serenity right there. But what can you do? Uh, John Barrowman has been quoted saying that he blames the egos for Torchwood not returning. And I'm going to put in quotes yet. That's not what he said, but it could still happen. He said he's still fighting. To bring back Torchwood, he's been working with Big Finish to produce uh, audio dramas in the Torchwood universe, including the uh, project titled The Lives of Captain Jack, which is set for 2017. And he says that he and other people on his side are still fighting to bring Torchwood back. So, that's that's encouraging, because the thing that's beautiful about Torchwood is that it lets, they went into those darker, more adult-themed stories that you couldn't get into on Doctor Who, and definitely, definitely not on uh, Sarah Jane Chronicles, or Sarah K- Jane Adventures, rather, or any of the kind of spin-off thing, like the K-9 show, no, you, you can't have those, those dark themes in there. So they were able to go get really gritty, you know? Um, and of course, Captain Jack's plight is that He's essentially immortal, so he gets to see he loves people and he loses them constantly, and that's a recurring theme. Of course, there's also the theory that, you know, Captain Jack is the same face of Bo that we saw in that one episode. Was it with Matt Smith? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Matt Smith, where the face of Bo said remembers the Doctor, but he didn't recognize the face of Bo, and the face of Bo dies because he gives up his life energies to save everybody. I forget the exact detail. I, that's another episode I need to go back to because I remember just the emotional reaction I remember very distinctly, but I don't remember 
all the circumstances. Derek, Derek H. says, this doctor's murderous. He kills people left and right, mostly by inaction. It's like he has a fresh a fetish for watching people die while he just stands by. Man, that's the same thing that Stan said when he was co-host on this show. Yeah, he... That, that aspect I don't like. Yeah. He's, uh... Like, it's good to have a no BS doctor, but this doctor doesn't seem to really care. And that's... And I guess that's the thing that's hard, like, the, the grumpy, curmudgeon old man is a cool shtick, but if you don't really have redeemable values, I feel that's the problem. He doesn't have a clear code, you know, he seems very reckless, and there's a lot of stuff that's happening in the, in the wake of, of his bad decision making, so that's an opportunity. For sure, that I, I can't deny. Uh, I, I I had hard t a hard time playing devil's advocate and arguing against that. But I mean, he threw rules that he threw the the guy off the edge of the balloon. But uh, then we were like debating: Well, did he throw him or did he just like let go by accident? And uh, semantics, I guess, at that point. Um. So uh, what else do we have here? So a while back, we were, we were talking about how it looks like Netflix may be uh, losing their contract with BBC, and there's been stuff on and off about that. Uh, for now, they have a bunch of BBC shows on there, but they did lose uh, Faulty Towers, Black Adder, that's a shame, MI5, eh, I don't really, that's not, I'm not too hurt about that, and Red Dwarf. Um, what else, what do they have here? They keep. They've kept so far. Doctor Who, Luther, Top Gear, season seventeen through twenty, Torchwood, Wallander, Keeping Up Appearances, the original Office, and uh, an original House of Cards series. So there you go. And of course, they they have uh, Sherlock, Happy Valley, uh, Honorable Woman, Call of the Midwife, and other series that were not up to, uh, for renewal. So they're kind of just doing the a la carte, not one one big sweep. Um, so those shows will be good for a long while. Uh, other things that happened this week, um, and we discussed this at length on Horseplay Live, uh, episode 144, if you want to listen to that. Warning, a word of warning for our kind of main listeners, our core audience on this show. Uh, our, you know, uh, Horseplay Live, we, we, talk, we cover a lot of good news on there. We have a lot of good discussions, but uh, it's not safe for work, and it's not... As structured as this show, so that's my word of warning. But give it, give it a shot, give it a fair shot, and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. But um, one of the big things that's been kind of buzzing about is the whole Samsung recall of uh, the was it the Galaxy Note Seven, and of course every Apple fan under the sun has taken this opportunity to say, "Oh, how's your Android phone doing now? Huh? It's good." And you know, I, I understand why people love Apple, I understand why people love Android. I'm an Android guy. Um, I, I like I, I I recommend Android. I'm not gonna try to convert people from Apple like Apple fans try to do. I, I see the appeal of Apple, but it's a closed ecosystem. It's an expensive ecosystem. There's a lot of barriers there. You don't have the same freedom. Uh, Apple's good if you just don't want to go, don't want to go under the hood. You want something that works. You don't like tinkering. You don't like control. You don't like freedom. You know. You just like something that works. I, that's the argument I make. And if you want to say it's stylish, sure, why not? Um, I, I made a joke on Facebook that I'd rather have my phone blow up in my ear than have an Apple product. <laughs> that may have been mean, but that's how I feel. That's just my loyalty. Um, another thing that came out, uh, so, you know, Pokemon Go access accessory launch. My son has one. He likes it. Uh, basically, he was telling me that what it does is, uh, it, it flashes different colors, and it beeps, and vibrates, and then you just push the button, and it lets you know if you caught the thing, or if you got the thing, or not. <laughs> not Pedersen, so that's savage. I know, and so once in a while, I got I, I kind of, you got a good dinger, a good zinger, and you just kind of go for it, man. 
<laughs> Why are you in Morgana Morgana's chat though? <laughs> Come on, the main chat. Well, I'll monitor both. Good thing I look at all these chats at the same time. Yay, IRC. Um. So yeah, the, the, this Pokemon Go uh, accessory is pretty neat. So you could catch Pokemon, you could pick up stuff. Uh, I think it lets you pick up incense and potions, whatever items, Pokeballs, all that stuff. Um, and it's all like automated, but you can't see what you got until you actually go into the app. So it's basically just something like you don't have to keep the app open. Makes sense. It's a, it's a smart move. Um, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I know she's hosting, but did it uh, did it ping you when she started hosting? They must have fixed that finally. Yay. So, because I was saying for the longest that Twitch needs to send out notifications when someone hosts another channel. Because it wasn't doing that for a long time. Uh, Alright. We, we actually be going longer than I thought here. And I need to start wrapping it up because... Nature is calling, and that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> this is why I need a co-host again. I need to get the cover for me while I'm uh, AFK. Um, what else was that in the news? Uh, the whole thing with Nintendo being greedy and not playing nice as usual with the whole no Mario Sky thing, and yeah, unfortunate. What can you do? And Mad Cats sold their SciTech division to Logitech. I thought that was pretty interesting because I'm a big fan of SciTech. Um, and if they can keep the price points, but then have the Logitech quality controls, that's good news for everyone, I think. And Logitech has a great product line to begin with, so it's a mutually beneficial scenario, no? Alright, so that's pretty much everything for Who Knew. Let's get into our creative corner. We'll probably cut it short today. Uh, keep it nice and sweet because eh, people have short attention span anyway. I think an hour, an hour and a half is the sweet spot, and we'll we'll table the rest of our discussions for next time. I do want to say though, for people that are saying Battlefield One is not a good game or it's slow, I don't know. I don't know what game they were playing because it was very fast paced to me, and um, I don't know. People say, oh, it's not it's not historically accurate. That's the thing. When the game like that, being really accurate or having that ultra realism, it's gonna compromise fun. It's really hard to do both. Uh, there are games out there if you want ultra realism or you want historical accuracy, they're out there. But I think that they got the balance just right because I mean I'm shooting these guns. They they're shooting all over the place. Even when you're shooting short bursts, at long range, the the fall off. Damage the the way the, the 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 bullets drop, you know, this is like a mostly close quarter game unless you're a, a sniper and even then, yeah, you're limited. So, I think they got it just right, and I'm actually looking forward to this. I gotta say, it's it's got me playing uh, Battlefield 4 again, and uh, that game's still fantastic in my opinion. Um, I don't know, it's like the epic scale of, ba of Battlefield games. Call of Duty is still fun. It's a guilty pleasure, but it's more of the same. And I think the re main reason people don't like Battlefield, period, because they can't be a lone wolf. You have to work as a team. If you're not using the squads to to spawn on each other and work together, you're not you know using the different classes to full effect, then you're doing it wrong. Whereas you know, most people play Call of Duty. It's post up somewhere, camp. You know, and just farm for kills, and it's all about the KDA. Objectives? What's that? <laughs> that's, that's the big difference. So, I don't know. If you like a team oriented shooter, but you don't like slow paced tactical shooters, Battlefield is nice, a nice compromise right in the middle. It's a happy medium. So, Creative Corner. We got our TWTT word of the day. It was brought to you, as always, by the swell people over at dictionary.com. Uh, it's also brought to you by the letter P, the X Men. And the few social geeks that are out there that have survived millennials and entitlement and content overload. And that the TWCT word of the day is drum roll. That's the best drum roll I can give you. Phalanx. And it's a noun that means a number of individuals, especially persons, united for a common purpose. 
And in ancient Greece, it's a group of heavily armored, or actually heavily armed infantry formed in ranks and files close and deep with shields joined and long spears overlapping. Kind of like we saw in the 300. So, I don't have a quote. I did not grab the quote. Shame on me. But, uh, the Phalanx are also an, an X-Men, so that's why it's appropriate. And, uh, I, I like that word. It's It's got, like, an oomph to it. The whole concept of unity, you know? It's something that we kind of work towards, but, you know, do we really do it? It's It's easier said than done, right? So, we'll be skipping... The rest of the, sh the what we have planned today, because I got to get going. I got to check in with the family. Uh, my wife's birthday is tomorrow, so there's stuff to be able to figure out for that. Um, closing thoughts, please check out our Extra Life campaign. You know, I, I, I don't like promoting and plugging stuff for ourselves that much, especially when there's a monetary thing involved. And people tend to respond kind of negatively to it. But you know what? It's for a good cause. I know a lot of us are struggling financially, but there's always something we give up. Uh, extra cup of Starbucks, uh, maybe eat out less, maybe skip out on a game. That, you know, that, that, let's be honest, most of the video games we buy end up on the wall of shame. We don't, we don't finish. I know for me, I rarely finish my games. So I like to. Ha I rather have a, a stable of video games that I know I'm gonna play and keep on rotation, get the most bang for my buck. And you know, there's always ways to streamline. So extra life, if you want to support it, support that cause. Help out children in need to get the medical attention that they require but can't afford. Geekyantics.net forces extra life. The information will be there. Of course, our Facebook page, facebook.com forces extra life. Uh, forces Geeky Antics, sorry. Jumping ahead here. Uh, you can join our team, share it, or, or consider making a donation. Or all of the above. That would be great. Um, and we'll be streaming on Twitch. On, uh, we'll, we'll all be streaming on the Geeky Antics channel. Some of us will also be streaming on our personal channels as well to kind of get the extra traction going. But uh, that's it for this week. We'll see you most likely in a couple of weeks. Uh, if I skip it, I will uh, tweet out. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, mention All Games Radio on Twitter and uh, tweet out everybody. Um, but I, you should be coming. I ha we have stuff planned, but there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, I got a bunch of projects going on. We're working on uh, Geeky Ants Mobile Lab. And I might I might need like like a, a weekend to myself just to kind of relax because during the week you just get so crazy. Uh, and I know Derek knows what what what's up. Like some clients are just so demanding, and so they just want to kind of bat, bash your head into your into a table. It doesn't matter if it's something technical that you're doing for them or if it's something creative. The the demands sometimes are unrealistic and uh, frustrating. Uh. For all the other show notes, um, let me make sure that I update our show notes. Yes, everything's good to go. Yeah, you remember our show notes are live and available on Google Drive. You'll be able to get to them through our description. So look for the link there. And then you can see all the stuff we have lined up coming up for you and what we discussed so far. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the music. And you know what? Maybe I'll end with something special. We'll end with our usual Scottish outro. And I'm going to play a theme song that Stephen Gibson, as, a.k.a. SG, um, from R9Cast on allgames.com. Definitely check that out. It's one of the best shows on the network in my opinion. Guy, clap. This is a theme we're going to be one of our shows we dedicated to design and we thank you. We thank you for every crumb, biscuit and cake you bring to the table. Because Doctor Who belongs to all of us. What you bring to the timey-wimey tea time in your live chat participation, comments, likes, shares, tweets and voicemail, all of it means the world to us. Love, true love never fails. Do you like it? 
If you like what we're doing, well, tell us for God's sake. Shout it from the rooftops at geekyantics.net or call it in 206 415 4987. That's 206 415 4987. That's it. Bless you. So long. And thanks for all the fish. Hold on, it won't be that long. Just a wee while. Because the timey wimey tea time will be back. We'll return next Saturday with fresh insights, questions, and epiphanies about Doctor Who. And heck yes, everything geek. Maybe same bat time. Absolutely the same bat channel. Every Saturday. <laughs>